Hi, my name is Jarek Brown, and I'm a undergraduate researcher for the Cedar Lab. I worked on the Secure Heterogeneous Autonomous and Rotational Knowledge for Swarms project, or Sharks for short. So the protocol itself is relatively simple. There's two rules, the center rule, which maintains optimal dist distance from the target, which is this red square here, is to keep it within this donut that is defined by an epsilon and a delta. Um, it's basically to make sure that they stay an appropriate distance away from a target, not too far away, but not too close either. Uh, then you have the dispersion rule, which is mainly just for the safety of the drones themselves within the swarm. Uh, the green circles here are representing our agents, so it's basically showing a way for them not to run into each other. Uh, if they get too close, all it tells is to make some more distance between the two drones, so that way they don't run into each other and you maintain integrity of the swarm. Now, some of our current work has to do with uh, implementing the Sharks protocol within physical hardware. Um, the protocol has been written about, I think, three or four times now, um, starting from the definition of the protocol to um, potential attack vectors and then workarounds against those attack vectors, and then some obstacle avoidance work has been done in the simulation so far. Um, Right now we're looking at how to take all of that work and slowly put it into a physical implementation. Um, we're gonna start with two wheel drones, so that way we're only dealing with two dimensions and it's also a little bit safer for everybody involved. Then we're gonna work towards aerial drones once we have a good two wheel drone working version. Uh, then we are going to bring them up into the air and they'll start doing spherical movements, which becomes a little bit more complicated because you start dealing with sine functions and things like that. So we're going to worry about that after we have everything solidly done in two dimensions. Now, so far, the physical implementation has been a little difficult, uh, to say the least. Uh, so the only thing that we really have so far is that we know that the AT Mega 328P microcontroller is going to be a really good option for us. It's going to be nice and scalable. It's going to be widespread. It has a relatively easy interface to learn. Um, you can see from this diagram, this is the pinout board of it. This is basically its physical mappings. Um, there is quite a lot there, but they're there for different reasons. And it's going to be nice and efficient for our purposes. So the initial attempts were in C, um, and for plenty of reasons, uh, there was a lot of obstacles present within that approach. So after we kind of looked through it, we tried to fix some of our issues with C, uh, and specifically dealing with an embedded system like this. Uh, after a little bit of regrouping, we decided that maybe Rust is a better option for us. Uh, we'd be able to optimize a little bit better. We'd be able to get a little bit more error checking in beforehand. Uh, memory safe operations would be a little bit more guaranteed, as would secure code. And it's a little bit more group friendly when dealing with a project like this. Um, an extension of what we're currently doing, it would be great to have a custom built microcontroller. It would allow us to kind of strip down the interface to a little bit more of a minimal uh structure it would allow us to kind of reduce the size reduce the number of pins that we're using which would then reduce the amount of power and it would allow us to create a little bit more scalable of an implementation for the future purposes